Using Logic's RetroSynth with the Rolly Seaboard Rise is incredibly easy because it's been designed as an MPE or Expressive MIDI synthesizer. So we just want to make sure the Rolly dashboard is configured in that mode. We'll set it to multi-mode with MPE on and a channel range from 2 to 16. We also want to make sure we're using the MPE standard of a pitch bend range of 48 semitones. Then into Logic, we'll add RetroSynth to a track and I'm starting with this really cool preset called PWM Bass. When using RetroSynth and many of the Logic synthesizers with the Rolly Seaboard Rise, you want to place the synthesizer itself in MIDI mono mode. And so you'll find at the bottom of many of the synthesizers in Logic, a triangle you can twirl open and there'll be options for MIDI mono mode. We'll choose the common bass channel of one and you'll see that the MIDI mono mode pitch range is 48 semitones, which matches what we had set in the Rolly dashboard. After that, you'll find it does work quite well. We can play our sound and let's hear what this sounds like right now. Now, the next thing we want to do when sound designing, I, you know, I always like to pick a preset that's almost perfect and then add the expression so it really works well with the Seaboard. And we'll find that in the settings window in RetroSynth here, there's some options to assign modulation. And one of the really nice ones is After Touch 2, and we can choose a destination. We want to remember that the press dimension of touch is going to translate to MIDI after touch. So whatever options we have as a destination here, we can control with the pressure on the key waves on the Seaboard Rise. So I'll set it to filter cutoff, which means that after touch or press is going to control filter cutoff. Anytime you're assigning modulation, you need a source, which is going to be after touch in this, in this instance. You need a destination, which is going to be filter cutoff, and you need an amount and a direction. And so we've assigned our source as aftertouch, our destination as filter cutoff, and we have a, a left-right fader here to decide what the amount and direction is. And we're going to set that positive about halfway up the fader here. Anytime you're assigning modulation, you also need to know what the origin of that modulation is, right? Where is it modulating from? And that's going to be right here in the filter cutoff diagram. And I'm going to set that a little bit lower so that when I touch the key wave, the filter cutoff starts quite low and then it will go up with press. Let's try it out. That's working pretty well but I might even want that bias point or that set point even lower. Let's try this. Get a nice response to that. Now remember that response will be adjusted by this touch fader here for press. And if I have that lower it's going to take less pressure to get to that maximum setting. If I have it all the way off, we're not going to send after touch at all. So it'll be very consistent and we won't have any response to pressure. I'm going to put that all the way up. I like that expression. Now I'm also noticing that the sound is fading out as I hold the note. And that's because our main amplitude envelope is in a percussive mode. It's the sustain level is all the way down. And I want to be able to hold this note out for a long time. So I'm going to go to the settings tab here and turn my sustain level all the way up. And this will allow me to hold the note. it'll stay powerful the whole time. The one last thing I want to change on this before I perform with it is to adjust the polyphony. This is a bass sound. I don't want to have multiple notes played at the same time. So I'm going to go back to the settings tab and adjust my voices down to legato. And let's see what this sounds like. 